Welcome back to Forex Professional Training in Financial Markets. In this session, we will explain the basic definitions and terms that you will come across in a financial market. We will start with symbols. A currency symbol consists of three letters, where the first two letters stand for the name of the country and the third letter for that country's currency. Here are the eight most globally recognized currencies and their symbols. USD, United States Dollars, CAD, Canadian Dollars, JPY, Japanese Yen, NZD, New Zealand Dollar, GBP, British Pound, AUD, Australian Dollar, EUR, European Euro, and finally CHF is the Swiss Franc. In a financial market, when we talk about symbols, we are usually trying to find out the value of one currency against another. There is always a ratio between currencies in financial markets. Currencies based on a dollar of any kind are called major currencies. These are written in two different ways. In a form of the denominator, for example, the euro and US dollar is EUR USD. Second way is an indirect, for example, the US dollar and Japanese yen, USD, JPY. All other currencies, like EUR, GBP, are referred to as cross, and are usually read as X divided by Y, where X represents the main currency, while Y specifies the opposing currency. Precious metals. Precious metals are a bit different. Spot gold is referred to as XAU or XAU USD against the US dollar. And future gold is termed GCXX. However, future gold may also be shown as XAU, but it will be on its own future gold section on the MetaTrader website. When dealing with energies, the most common of all is oil, which is shown as CLXX, where the XX will change from contract to contract. This will always be found in the future section on the MetaTrader website. If we look at the MetaTrader platform, we will see many different types of symbols. Again, for example, USD CHF is the US dollar against the Swiss franc. You will also see a spot gold and oil symbols, such as XAU and CLXX, which are always calculated as future instruments. Minimal measurement. Now it is time to talk about PIP. This is the smallest measurement of change in a currency pair. For instance, if the price of euro against the US dollar is 1.3800, and it rises to 1.3801 or falls to 1.3799 it changed by 1 pip. If you divide 1 pip by 10 you will have 10 pipettes which will add one extra decimal digit to the currency pair value. For instance if the euro against the US dollar is shown as 1.38500 and it rises to 1.38501 or falls to 1.38499, it has gained or lost one pipette respectively. A five decimal places figure is more accurate than a four decimal places figure, as it allows you to observe any small changes in the price, therefore giving you greater insight and a higher chance of making a profit. When writing a currency as a symbol, you must do it to a four decimal place figure representing the pip value, or a five decimal place figure representing the pipette value. All the other symbols with JPY or against oil and silver are represented in either a two decimal place format for pip and a three decimal place format for pipette. Or against gold, one decimal place format represents the value in pip and two decimal format in pipette. If you actually look up on the platform, you will see here 
British pounds against US dollars is shown in five decimal format and US dollars against Japanese yen is in pipette values since it has three decimal digits. It is also clear to see gold prices which are measured in pipette with two decimal places and again oil is also represented with two decimal places but in pip format. Spread. The next subject is called the spread which means the difference between buying and asking price as well as selling and bidding price. For instance, if the price of euro against US dollar is 1.3820 and it changes to 1.3822, the 2 pip increment is the spread. In order to describe the size of transactions, we use a term lot. One lot is equal to 100,000 units. It means if you are trading one lot using major currencies, you will lose or gain $10 and when you deal one tenth of a lot you are dealing 10,000 units or one dollar. If you are dealing with one hundredth of a lot which is equal to 1,000 units you will lose or gain one tenth of a dollar. Usually the lowest amount traded in standard accounts is 0.1 in a micro account while in mini accounts it is 0.01 and in nano accounts it is 0.001 However, there are very limited numbers of brokers who offer a trade for such a low amount. There is a formula to calculate your gains and losses which is the values difference multiplied by the size of transaction multiplied by net profit for trading value or values of difference times size of transaction times net profit for trading. For better understanding Let's look at these examples in which our base unit will be 50. Example 1. We are trading one lot. Our value difference is 50 and our size of transaction is one unit. Therefore, for every one lot we will gain or lose $10. If inserting the number into the formula it looks like this. 50 times 1 times 10 equals 500. Example 2. We are trading 0.2 lot. Our value difference is still 50. After applying the formula, it looks like this. 50 times 0.2 times 10 equals 100. Example 3. We are trading 0.03 lots. Our value difference remains at 50. Apply the formula once more. 50 times 0.03 times 10 equals 15. Dollar was the base currency in all of the above examples. It is different for all other indirect currencies. For instance, if the US dollar against Japanese yen exchange rate is 102.57, this means that each 100 yen is worth $102. So we must divide 2 by 102 to get 0 0.02 which will add to it. We must then divide 10 by 1.257 which is a hundredth of the exchange rate to give us 9.749 which is the amount of profit or loss we will make on exchanging these currencies. Leverage. The next thing which will accompany small parties to participate in this market is leverage. This will also pose a risk for the party because they can loan several times more than their capital from their broker at the moment of trade. The quantity of this loan between brokers is variable. For instance, some brokers may even go up to 1000 to 2000 in leverage, but you should know that the standard is between 100 and 500. You should also consider that the higher the leverage, the higher the risk it holds margin. The next step is a margin. A margin is a collateral that the holder of a financial instrument has to deposit to cover some or all of the credit risk of their counterparty, most often their broker or an exchange. As you can see, our investment is $50,000.
and this is a demo account. The margin, which was asked for for the positions here, is $252.98, and at the moment we are losing $33.9. Now, if we add our profit or loss to the amount of margin, we will have a free margin. Thus, any time that we close a position, a free margin amount will be charged to the account. Remember that the bigger the size of a transaction, the bigger margin it makes. When a party miscalculates their account, and the account goes down almost to zero, it's referred to as margin call. Swap. Next is swap, which is related to the interest rates. This interest rate is always calculated exactly at midnight. As you can see, the FX Pro server time is 18.25 now, and at midnight the swaps will be added to the account. At the moment we have some positions. The positive swap, which is the difference between the interest rates and the broker's cut, is usually added to the open positions when it is positive. The negative swap, which is the difference between the interest rates plus the broker's cut, is subtracted each night because of your open positions. You should know that both of these numbers are negative. Wednesdays are the busiest days for swap. This is because Wednesday, Saturday and Sunday are holiday days. This means all the swaps from these days are processed on Wednesday night and early Thursday morning. That concludes this session. Until next time and another session, take care.